Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers, and welcome to episode 102 of the Next Level Authors Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name is Daniel Wilcox, and here with me every single week is... Sasha Black. Sasha Black. How's it going, Sasha? How's your week been? Um, I'm tired, but I think I'm probably not as tired as you, my love. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had a bit of a week where <clears throat> I've been so drained that um I have like walked into things so I'm like covered in bruises I've like smashed oh, no. glasses um you know I've, I've been cleaning up glass most of the week so I keep breaking things uh, yeah when I'm tired I tend to get quite clumsy so I've had sort of a very clumsy I spilt coffee all over a keyboard which then broke and then when it dried it magically worked so that's yeah. that's fluky as hell I don't know. I don't know how it's working. Like literally like the space bar, the delete bar and like a couple of the letters just completely conked out. And I was like, fuck, because uh, like I have smashed well, not smashed, but like battered through use a couple of these. This is my favorite keyboard. Um, and I was just like, I don't know if I can buy another one of the same keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's weird because um, you're like, I just want something a bit fresh. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, funny. it's funny because I did then buy a really fancy keyboard, um, which then I discovered because the, the wrist position wasn't actually any good for me. Um, so I've got to take it back today. And but then like now I'm like, oh, I wanted a new keyboard. I want a purple mm. keyboard. Oh, and then God. I'm like, that is such a first world issue. Like, shut the fuck up and just use your keyboard. Basically. I will send you some paint <laughs> if you want to just dip it. You'll have to like tip X the letters back on, but you'll have yeah. a purple keyboard. <laughs> Oh, it's the simple things. But you're How reconnected you? as well with internet. I'm reconnected yes. with the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Interwebs. Oh, it's glorious. It is so, so amazing. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Helga. Um, <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so cheeky. Everything cheeky. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I it, can't. <laughs> it's no I just I am so delightfully happy with the internet um I forgot what the internet was like it is fucking glorious like all hail the internet and what it can do for us and how it connects us to people and like because this was a weird thing right <clears throat> not only did I not have the internet for three fucking weeks yeah I also we also had that storm in the UK and that like pulled down a mast or something around here because our 4g cut out so i had no way of contacting anybody like none it was like i was a child again and you had to like go and fucking walk around to your friend's house and knock on the door to see if they were still alive and um <clears throat> is jimmy yeah, coming so, out to play yeah i can come and play Don't call the landscapes. he's just having um, dinner he'll be out at six okay uh, i'll come back then <laughs> Like, oh my yeah, god i know like those were the days man um <clears throat> yeah and um so then like i would have like 70 notifications pop through on my phone like randomly and then i'd have nothing again for like six hours man. um so yeah i i have to say i am i'm really 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 pleased to be back in the land of connected I also really missed my patrons like I know that's really sad but like Aww. no I really did because like it's such a lovely Patreon community and like the Slack group is really quite lively and they like just fill me with joy <laughs> so I was really sad <laughs> like I couldn't like because I was getting messages like in random streams and then it would be yeah. like there was 30 messages and I'd be like well that, that, then the conversation was four hours ago yeah I was a bit like oh, I can't really you know so yeah I'm really glad to be reconnected to everybody hey love it Love it. But yeah, my uh, my week. I th- so I think we say a lot about weird week. I think this has possibly been the weirdest week. Um, so I don't, I don't even know where to start. I mean, most people kind of know this anyway. But so as of last Friday, so we recorded the last episode on a Thursday. As of Friday, I was absolutely exhausted with the news. And I put myself into a bit of a spiral of 
looping yourself down every single YouTube video of what's currently going on, like in Russia and Ukraine and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just, I just got myself into a bit of a, a tizzy, which very British word. But then, so on Friday evening, I was like, I am absolutely exhausted. Um, put my son to bed and I was like, I'm just going to chill. Like, I'm just going to sit down, take some time, get away from everything, like turn off the internet, blah, 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 blah. And then the wonderful Samantha Frost, who is our assistant on this show, who helps out a lot with the Activated Office stuff, calls me up and says, I've got an idea. Why don't, why don't we do a drive for Ukraine with the writers? And I was like, I had that moment of like, oh my God, I've literally just sat down and I want to unplug. And then my brain started going and I was like, like, why don't we? Like, why don't we do something? Because, you know, we, we mentioned last last week, there are so many different problems going on in the world um, that like, you, yeah, I had to say it. There are a thousand, a million thousand good things. And we see, we can, we've seen a lot of that happening, but there are also a lot of horrible things. And like, I have always wanted to just really to kind of contribute to something and this ukrainian russian stuff is really sort of affecting me on, on quite a deep level because where i live in england it's sort of very traditionally a military uh, not military an raf area and for the last four days this is no exaggeration i've just what had see you by i'm not going to say that publicly on the podcast oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i forgot that people listen to this <laughs> I will just Google it because I should know which. which yeah, no, there's, there, there are there are a fair yeah. few of them. But um, okay. yeah, and this is no exaggeration, but for the last four days, it has been a constant droning of propellers in the air. Like I've seen military helicopters fly over because obviously they're nothing's happening, but they're preparing just in case. Yeah, we've got two here. Mm. We've got like two sort of either side of us and yep. we haven't had anything this week. But the week before it was there were like there was a lot going on the week before yeah. it kicked off. Yeah, yeah. We haven't had anything this week, this last week. And it's just, it's, it's been awful for my mental health. It really has. I've been in a real slump. Um, and so I was like, you know, over the years of doing the indie writing stuff, I've spoken to a lot of people on podcasts. Like I do have a lot of connections and stuff. I was like, you know what, let's put something together and see what happens. So I um, birthed the 1 million word challenge, which as of recording today is a night for the March that we, we um, as officially started this morning, but that gave us, four days to prepare so saturday i basically set up everything um i then enlisted the help of some activated authors to volunteer and sort of help to outreach and all that kind of stuff but i just want to read some stats to kind of say where we're at in the minute because this has happened as i say there was nothing friday night saturday morning was when it all happened and here's where we're currently at so um we are raising money for the british ukrainian aid through a gofundme um and the aim of the one million word challenge is just to have as many authors into this kind of think of it like a nano but it doesn't necessarily have to be new words but to collectively the idea is to try and write a million words because i found that trying to work on my fiction projects seems it doesn't have to be new words no nope, it can be editing it can be newsletters it can be blog oh, okay. posts it can be okay. whatever it's just words like honestly it's, it's charity it's not it's not too strict um but I did, what do you uh, mean but... there are no rules? Isn't this a competition? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can you can go up against some people who've already got quite a few no, high word counts. I, I'm kidding, but <laughs> <laughs> but like I was I was trying to work on my fiction and um, like sort of the ghostwriting stuff, and I was actually like, I found I, I was like I want to do something that like has external impact. So it was kind of like for me, I can ghostwrite, but also be totaling up and adding sort of like donations. So the stats we've got so far, we have raised uh, £4,696 for British Ukrainian aid. We are just on the verge Amazing. of £5,000. Total words that are registered on the tracker as of 20 past nine on the first day is 20,599. We have a total of 156 writers actively on the sheet, as well as another couple of hundred on the newsletter list that are kind of slowly working their way over. We are in 20 countries, including UK, Mexico, US, France, Ireland, South Africa, Nigeria, Canada, Cyprus, Guam, Australia, Austria, Italy, the Netherlands, Croatia, Germany, Seychelles, Poland, Kenya, and Japan. And then in terms of just like the people that have shared and just the support that we've got, we've got um, support from the Alliance of Independent Authors, obviously Activated Authors, Next Level Authors. We've got the Author Success Mastermind. We've got Mark Leslie Lefebvre at Start Reflection, Jenna Maresi, Sarah Cannon at Heart Breathings, Christina Adams and Ellie Betts at The Writer's Mindset. The Hawk and Cleaver guys at the Other Stories podcast. We've got Chris Kane at the Right Away podcast. Jeff Adams at the Big Gay Fiction podcast. Mibla, the cover design company, are massively behind the campaign because they have authors, uh, uh, creatives on the ground in Ukraine. Same with Children's Book Mastery and uh, Karen Ferreira. We've got the Unstoppable Authors guys. We've got Horror Hangout. We've got the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. We've got House of Lotus and, as I say, NLA. And so, like, in four, four and a half, five days, we have just... So I, I literally have not been 
I've barely stopped and neither has Sam and neither have like the volunteers we've had. And I will do a very quick shout out to, and I'm, I'm really sorry if I forget someone, but we've got uh, Pan, Jess, Emma, Sarah. Um, oh, there's another one. Emmy, just ev- everyone, everyone who's kind of like volunteered to get involved. So that's my week, man. And that is what will likely be over the next week as well, as I continue to not only ghostwrite my stuff and add to the word counts, but just contribute and try and get as much as we can going over to, um, over to the Ukrainian refugees. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah. You should be very, very proud of yourself and so should the community for like yes. pushing in and doing and donating. And this, yeah, the support has been mental. So thank you absolutely everyone and keep pushing it. Um, well, so, so just two more things that I've got in my update. Uh, number one, I had my first business coaching call yesterday, Ooh. which was really interesting because it was kind of like a diagnostic um, how to basically narrow down what you're offering is so that you can sell the products better. And this, it makes it seem sort of very um, corporate, but like in my head, I know I'm, I'm kind of like getting how it's coming together. Um, but yeah, I had a sort of like a 45 minute diagnostic call with a business consultant specifically who kind of like I had to sell him what I do. And then he worked with it, workshopped it to then sell it back in a way that was better. So I've now got sort of the framework that I'll be moving ahead with my coaching on, which was good. And the other update, and I won't pick her up again because she's nice and comfortable, but I'll see if I can move my camera. I have my little Aww. doggo. Ignore all the mess on the side. Look at her. So I finally got my little doggo over at my house. <clears throat> and can I just say from like the pre-show, she is adorbs. She is. I'm sure we'll um, probably get stitched onto the end or something. But yeah, her name's Louise and she's four and a half. Um, and I basically rehomed her from uh, my nan, who is, um, well, she's 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 OK, but she's just unable to look after. She's got quite a few dogs, so she's unable to look after them all. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been an interesting experience kind of bringing something else into the home. And just it's that conscious thing of like I have plans for things in the coming weeks. And I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I've got arrangements for the dog or like bring the dog with me and stuff. So it's it's a learning curve but it's nice to have some company here Aww, yeah, yeah I, I have to say I do miss having the cat here mm. like and that that was one of the things I think about being in the space during the day when there were people there yeah. I've forgotten like how isolating it is when you have no company all day every day absolutely <laughs> like, yeah yeah anyway. um what uh have you enjoyed this week uh I had a coaching call with Becca Sign with the leading lady herself and it was fabulous I think she in part told me what I already knew (laughs) which is funny but we had a sort of a joke about self-assurance and the fact that self-assurance already knew um and then she gave me some actions to take away and um basically one of the biggest actions is that I need to find my rage (laughs) um interesting yeah yeah it is interesting because I'm right there with you I think well so I'm halfway there I'm halfway there because of something that's happened and now I have the spite like I'm very spite driven I'm literally almost purely (laughs) spite driven and and that's okay because that's where beating other people comes in right Mm -hmm. so it makes sense that I would be spite driven but spite is very healthy for me like it is and I know that people will hear this and be like what like this bitch thinks spite's healthy oh honey honey let me tell you how fucking healthy spite is like spite will make me do anything to win fucking anything anything to win look oh my god I'm just like riling myself up here even talking about it like I can feel the burn coming (laughs) (laughs) no but I love it like spite is so generative in a in a way that because look I'm not an inherently nasty person I'm not gonna like go and stab someone well it depends how much they know me but no Uh, like do you know what I mean like I'm not ever gonna do anything to like hurt another human being so um spite for me is generative because it makes me take action to better myself Mm -hmm. so that's what I mean about it being really really good for me and like so yeah like I think I just need to find my spite about this particular thing Mm -hmm. um and then feel the rage deeply and uh off I go and then um and then, yeah, she sort of gave me some actions and some other things. And I need like a follow up with Ellie, I think, uh, yeah. on one particular thing. Um, but yeah, that was really, really affirming. So question, just because I'm trying to figure it out in my head. Is spite attributed to an internal or, or external locus of validation? 
validation. I'm not sure it's about validation. I think it's about motivation. Okay, I think semantics, but like, is it internal or is it external? Um, because is it? That is an interesting question because in all, in it depends what you're spiting. Because sometimes I will do things to spite myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so really, <do> you <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> like literally i will be like bitch i'm gonna fuck you up if you don't do this fucking thing like like you sound down. like the notes that i leave on my work when i'm editing <laughs> i know what like, are you thinking you fucking idiot fix this yeah um yeah so i i don't know i think it depends who the spite is directed at and and the connecting strength probably everyone drink um yeah so sometimes it's externally driven like trying to beat my old day job income was very externally driven yeah but that's not really about validation oh oh but that's interesting isn't it because it's internal validation oh that's so interesting it was an external motivator but an internal validation because i'm not going to tell anyone from my old day job mm -hmm. but i know and mm -hmm. that's the only important thing is that i know that i won right yeah. i don't give a shit that anybody else knows I need to know that I beat them. So yeah, that is so interesting. I would say the answer is it depends. Sometimes it's external and sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's internal. I, I think because I have self-assurance, most of the time I'm having to prove shit to myself. Yeah. So I would say I'm probably 70, 30 internally motive, internal validation versus external validation. Sometimes so I you, need external validation, but most of the time I think it's internal. Yeah, so if you think about self-assurance it's almost like the fuel Self-assurance then... is the um, anchor and and yeah. knower of decision making. Competition is the fuel. Okay, so in this example, if you see competition as the fuel, yeah. and then that kind of spite, almost like the vehicle that will drive you where you need to go, based off of the fuel of competition. Um. Okay, so then I would say competition. I say it's the other way around. Spite is the fuel, and competition is the driver. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Because the more spite I feel, the more fueled up I get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Glad we clarified that for everyone. Else <laughs> this I just, I just find it really classic. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is interesting. Because it's always hard. Like, it's hard enough you, trying. You are motivated so differently to me. Yeah, I so like, different. Yeah, my motivation because uh, I'm having this conversation with um my my counselor at the minute because she said something really interesting in that last session that has had me really thinking about myself because she was like oh, you seem to be really driven and motivated by other people seeing you and seeing what you do. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, but I'm really not like everything that I do. Like I'm, I'm similar to you I, like, in the sense that like the stuff that I do, I do for me. And like, as long as I'm accountable to myself, as long as I you know deliver to myself, that's the only thing that really matters. But then on top of that, I think, because I think there's a few dimensions and this might go a bit too deeply to <laughs> kind of like give a full explanation on this. But what I was thinking was, a lot of what I talk about is legacy and like I want to ensure that once I am dead and gone that there's that I've done something good like that I've left some kind of imprint and that's not necessarily driven specifically by other people that's driven by my want to do so so I'm just kind of like battling in my head like how that fits in and what that looks like and I've got um, a session with her next week that I'm going to dive into this more but like I found it very interesting that that was kind of like her take on things because it was very opposite to how I thought about myself yeah, legacy though is is only about other people and other people seeing you. But not the way I see it. I think that's where it. Like, I I totally get what you're saying, but I think it's just framed differently in my head. And this is what's interesting about strengths because for somebody with high significance, legacy is definitely about like the impact you leave on other people. So that's definitely mm -hmm. about other people seeing and appreciating, or not appreciating, but like having been impacted. For me, it's about helping other people, leaving an impact, bettering other people's lives. But that is about other people, right? So, but that's a significant motivation. So, like for somebody who I don't know, and I'm not a coach, so I could be getting this very, very wrong. But logically, in my brain, someone with positivity perhaps would be wanting to have a positive effect on other people, which is a legacy in a way, mm. but like it's a different motivation. Yeah, something to think on. Yeah, I, I yeah. yeah. If you, I don't know if you're in the Patreon coaching, but you should ask about that if you are. Yeah, I think <laughs> anyway. in the in the in the words the wise words of a band that I can't quite remember the name of right now. Feel free to drop it in the comments. I don't want to waste my time. 
uh, something I've enjoyed this week. So, um, I mean, obviously, just the incredible support from the author community on all levels has been overwhelming. Like, genuinely, just every time I get like an email from someone saying, "Can we be involved? What can we do?" Like, it's it's it is really powerful. So, thank you for that. Um, but then also, I will continue on with Archive eighty one. I haven't watched too much more of it because obviously been super super busy but like every because i'm watching sort of like a little bit every now and then and it's really gripping it's really gripping i have no fucking idea what's going on and i love it like it's that kind of thing it's it's scrambled enough that you that you are drawn in and you go i need to know what's happening because it's it's got i i just hope it delivers i really really hope it delivers um quarterly confessional sasha will read a minimum of five sapphic books implement outsourcing and check off five things on the new business plan yeah all of them boom yeah. boom boom dan will dictate two novels launch a survey write three short stories and launch a new podcast the podcast is launched i have done one short story i have well i'm starting the second novel today uh, i haven't launched a survey but to be fair with this next seven days i'm hoping that that gives a lot of momentum to a lot of the things that i'm doing because i just like to bash some stuff out um but yeah it's getting sort of squeaky bum time because again at the time I didn't see myself adding this onto my plate yeah and I'm almost almost gonna feel mean when I make you wear like a titty top or something like, you made me wear a titty top yeah no when I that's why I said or something uh, <laughs> like nipple clamps or something this time oh no um, like yeah I don't know I don't know you're assuming I have nipples okay so over to <laughs> Patreon <laughs> <laughs> i'm so tired sasha <laughs> oh darling i know I, oh, that's why i said i almost feel mean unfortunately oh I did on the inside and don't have any fucks to give which oh is why God. i shall continue taking the piss right <laughs> um, <laughs> um the thing is i so i can't remember if we've got new, like dick last time on patreon 18th of February. What's the date today? Oh, no, okay. I know. I think that's fine. Okay, so we have a comment. No new patrons this week. Mm-hmm. But if you would like to join us on Patreon, that have we scheduled a live for this month? I don't think we have. No, we're still deliberating dates. Oh my god, we need to do that after this call. Yes. Um. Then um. Don't know what I'm saying. Basically, join us. We're really <laughs> organised, and you can join <laughs> us on Patreon.com forward slash Next Level Authors. Oh, that's got to be our question one week. <laughs> How organized are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so organized all the time with everything. So organized. This is just Monica's cupboard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is definitely Monica's cupboard. Cool. Uh that's Patreon notices. Um, so uh yeah, let me try this again. Notices. Have you got anything for us, Sasha? Um when does this go out? So it goes out on Tuesday the 15th. And then so there will be three early. days left on my birthday giveaway discount. Not giveaway, sorry, birthday discount. So I'm 35. <coughs> so I'm doing 35% off everything using uh, the code birthday35. If you buy direct, that's on my courses, audiobook and uh, digital books. What's 30 in French? Is it 30? Yeah. Yeah, 35. Thanks for that random French number. I just want to just yeah. want to add more to the 35 brigade. Um, so my notice is going to be a very obvious one. Uh, activatedauthors.com forward slash Ukraine, where you can find all the information to donate. Um, by the time this goes out, we will be on the final day of the challenge, but that doesn't mean you still can't get involved. Um, we, I mean, it's, it's all for charity. As I say, it's kind of just dip in what you can and help those who need it right now. Um, I am so on it this week. Comments. Last so we week's question, how do you on... know it is worth the risk? We had a comment on Patreon from Eden, and they said, if I'm deciding if the risk is worth taking, I ask myself three questions. Are the potential rewards worth it? Does taking the risk help me get to where I want to go faster, better, more easily? Do I have a plan if I don't succeed? If I answer yes to all of those, then I find a risk is often worth taking. Mm. Um, and then I think we also then John Cronshaw said I always go with the Rob Moore quote if you risk nothing you risk everything oh yeah it's I always like the decision that. yeah <clears throat> I like that a lot what's the um 
if you stand for nothing, you fall for everything. Yeah, I don't like know. that one as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that all of them. Yep, that was it. Nice to see yeah. you, John. It's been a while. Need to catch up some point. Okay, so this week's question again, I think, is very, very on theme, and you can go with this um, a couple of ways. So. Obviously, I've been heavily involved in a lot of the campaign stuff this week. So this is very much on my mind. But the question is, how can writing change the world? And as I say, there are a couple of directions in the sense of obviously sort of like actual external global impact versus, you know, the actual um, sort of readership day to day impact through things like fiction and stuff. So how can writing change the world? I think writing can change the world in many, many ways. Like if you take so I over the course of my life have been quite the activist um and I have done things like um <clears throat> so I can't remember what his position is in the cabinet now he used to be the chairman of the conservative party um but he also when I was in the union was a um the housing minister and so I conducted a massive survey um, of like literally thousands of students wrote an, a gigantic report which I submitted to our local MP who happened to be the housing minister and I got this uh, basically in the UK uh, landlords are not regulated so like the housing mm. um, rental uh, industry industry that's not what I mean that's not the word anyway the rental industry is not regulated there is no regulating body and so apart from HMOs which came in in and around that time. Um, <clears throat> and this one report basically got a massive housing scheme created um, to protect students. And so I think writing can change the world in lots of different ways. So like that's one thing that we did. And then like another campaign I remember, um, it was just so small and it was like postcards. I had like 5,000 postcards or 10,000 postcards printed. I think we dumped, I think we got 5,000 signed and for every I made I made all of these students and this was about the tuition fee cap in the UK now look this one wasn't successful like the, the housing campaign was successful and um, we had other universities and stuff looking at our model that we created for getting like it was like a trusted partner system for landlords for students and it brought the housing standards up for students and that was like one little report one report changed the lives of like or changed the, the home life of loads and loads and loads, thousands of students in, in, in and around my university area and then this postcard campaign, um, like, you know, they only had to write, like, please, please vote against lifting the tuition fee cap off. That's all I made them write. And then like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them put their address on the postcards. And I remember Chloe and I like driving up to um, the um, MP constituents house at midnight because we didn't want to get caught. And like we dumped, we were like threading these postcards through the, the letterbox. He, I swear to God, like we had a lot of banter like across newspapers and stuff, but um and and also in person because we met quite a few times because I was like, you know, attacking him really for like the housing situation. Uh, but anyway, he I to give the guy his credit, he hand signed every single return letter to every student who wrote their address on because not all the students did write their addresses on. That's huge. And I, it was huge. And yeah. I was like, do you know what? And I had hundreds and hundreds of students coming up to me saying, look, thank you. Even if he doesn't vote like against it, he's had to like, you know, sign this and get it back to. And, and that letter meant something to them. So like mm. like over the year, yeah, because obviously I know this is like a campaign. -y, so I'm trying to think of like examples that are campaign uh, oriented. Like I. Yeah. So like writing in that way can be so tiny. It can be like sending a postcard. Like I have a thank you card here for somebody who's done something really nice for me. And I'm gonna write a paragraph, a few lines in there. And, but I think it will make a difference because when you thank people for the nice things that they do, like they feel appreciated and like mm -hmm. tiny words can make a huge difference. Like yeah. it, it is amazing how, like I think the world runs with words, but obviously I would mm. say that because I'm biased. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, like it's true. Like I think so many words, like a text message to say thank you or a text message to say, hey, to somebody who's feeling really low. I haven't checked in for you, checked in with you for a while. I just wanted to see if you were okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I basically haven't been replying to many people and somebody messaged me and said, you know, or, like, are you okay? It's not like you to not reply. And I was like, actually, no, I'm not really okay. Um, and that really made a difference. That made me feel better. And it was like five words in a sentence that made a difference to me. So like, I don't know, I think 
I think, you know, and then there are the big things, right? So there are, <clears throat> and okay, author and the author's opinions aside, who we no longer, are, she shall not be named, but Harry Potter has changed an entire generation. It gave life to reading for an entire generation of children. Um, and and is that is a legacy because my son has recently picked up the Harry Potter books mm -hmm. and is now completely enthralled in literature and fantasy worlds. And I can I am literally watching his imagination develop. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Words <laughs> create imagination they they you know I, I just think words are so powerful they can be powerful on on the giant level like that and then you know I hope that like so like with my revelation over the last year and um seeing myself in books was so I don't know. It was it was life changing to see myself represented in books. I didn't even realize that I hadn't been represented in books. And that was like, I don't that was, I don't know what like what short circuited, but having that realization, like whoever all those authors that has taken the time to write those books that that I am represented in, I am so deeply grateful because it's changed my relationship with fiction. And that is everything. It is escapism. It is enjoyment. It's passion. It's enthusiasm. It's, it's obsession. Like it, it is, it is the most, I think words are the most powerful thing that we have and we can change people's lives on a tiny, tiny scale. And we can change people's lives on a giant scale. We can rewrite laws, you know, for good or for bad. Um, unfortunately, Florida has passed mm -hmm. that law, which is fucking disgraceful. Disgusting. Like, it mm -hmm. is disgusting. Um, but, you know, in the UK, they brought in same sex marriage 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't like. Yeah, I just think that. That words are so powerful. And if you are privileged enough to be able to write and to be able to read, then you have power to change. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's not placing a burden on anybody to say that you have to change the world. You can change one person's day, one yeah. person's day. You know, you can, you can change one person's day with just checking in or with just sending a message to say that you really appreciate somebody mm. or, you know, yeah. So I, I, I think words can change the world. <laughs> well, your messages to me yesterday really lifted me up. Ah. Mm. So I appreciate, appreciate the message, but yeah, like I, I wasn't sure which direction I was going to go. Cause obviously like, I think people will know what my, um, well, some of what my answer is to this in the terms of, well, let me just peel it back and pretend that I haven't said anything up to this point. Like I, I a hundred, I a hundred percent agree with everything that you said. Like I think, cause it's not just, it's not just words. Like you can throw words out there and they can mean nothing or you can throw them out there and they can mean everything. It depends on who is reading it, what their position is, how you've written it, what your position is. And like, just even just twisting and changing subtle words here and there can have such a big impact. I mean, you know, talking about raising kids, like something that I always do with Bailey, like if he achieves something or, he goes gymnastics and then he's learned how to do a proper forward roll. It's never like, I, I'm very, very deliberate at never saying, Oh, you're good at gymnastics or like you're, you're very skilled. You were born good at gymnastics because you know, the truth is he wasn't. I'm very specific to say well done on all that practicing because then he understands that it's the practice that leads to the end goal. It's not even just the achievement itself. Like the achievement is in the practice. Um, and I, I say it with like when he, with his spellings, when he gets those right or like his maths and stuff, it's like, it's because you've been practicing this, like that you, you're able to do this. It's not just like, oh, you're really, really smart because, you know, th there's a whole sort of like um, talent versus skill versus practice debate in there. But that's one example of just slightly changing how you talk to people, how you approach stuff to empower them rather than, yeah. Um, and then as you say, there's sort of the bigger scale things of you know campaigning putting stuff out there and just the physical use of being able to use words to influence and again there's skill in that like my background comes from copywriting and marketing and being very very deliberate in the choice of words and empowering so like there's there's a certain way that you can be effective with selling without sort of um bankrupting your own moral code and lying like you can push those boundaries you can kind of say things in a way that 
does give people more hope that you know there's legitimacy to the campaign like i've had messages from people this week um saying oh how do how does the organization know for example that um, my donation has been accepted to then be on the, the tracker and i've replied and gone like i am the i am the organization like this is a couple of people this isn't a massive thing but the way that i've obviously put it together and sold it adds a lot more legit legitimacy to it which then empowers people to get involved more because you know people believe what they see um like i love i love what you said about text messages and putting those forward and just kind of like reaching out to people and just helping people feel seen i like what have i got open that's buzzing i thought i closed everything there we go um but also conversely i think it's also worth nodding to the fact that there is a darker side of that like people can say mm -hmm. stuff that can really dig into you and just like the choice of words the sort of tone of stuff um like i have had quite a few comments this week which are what a friend of mine, I won't say who kind of, I didn't know this was a term, but like what about isms? So I've put, I've been putting a lot of stuff out there, obviously about Ukraine and the refugees. And in certain places I've had comments from people going, oh, and I suppose you're going to be running a campaign as well for all the refugees in Yemen. This is a crisis, blah, 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 and kind of that. And you know what, like fair game to them. There are like, I'm not saying this is the only issue in the world. You brought up the, the Texas laws that have passed, which are absolutely atrocious. Like there are, there are a lot of atrocities in the world that need attention um, but to diminish someone's effort to make a difference by highlighting all the rest of the atrocities that you're not touching isn't helpful. Do you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. And my answer every time has been, well, just, just plain and simple. Like, I will do what I can where I can because I, mm. I believe in trying to help make a difference where I can. I think where that comes from, though, is um, so like, for example, Black Lives Matter. And this mm -hmm. is I, I'm nervous to say this because it's such a political topic and I don't I don't do I have a blanket no politics on any of my platforms because my politics are private and I donate and I campaign privately I don't need the world to know what I'm doing I because I am doing and I'm taking action and that's my choice um but what I think bothers people certainly minority groups is when something explodes and lots of people campaign and they're active. So if you take Black Lives Matters last year, everybody was putting stuff everywhere on social media. But in one way, it can be performative mm -hmm. because they do it then and there when it's a big deal. But how many authors are actually posting about Black Lives Matters now? And it's not just authors. It's like people with platforms, right? People with platforms are very willing to post stuff up when it's a big thing. But then what happens in six months time or a year's time where the devastation of whatever has happened and then nobody's campaigning anymore right yeah. and i think so like if we take like a, a um a, a lgbt let's just say same-sex marriage or whatever i don't know like let, it blows up everybody's doing it as somebody who's lgbt and in that space it it feels not authentic when people post stuff up because it's a big thing at that time mm -hmm. and then everybody forgets about it afterwards so for somebody from that diverse community I'm like well did they really mean it because they don't you know so and I think that's where that comes from I think that's yeah. one of the places that that comes from and I don't think people mean it. like I don't necessarily think people are trying to diminish I think that other people have um what's it passions yes and they're worried about other things and therefore that's really important to them. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and when you have a platform and you start promoting one particular thing, that says something. Yes. And so other people are then like, oh, so don't you care? And if you have fans in other places, then they can, I don't know, it, I'm just guessing, but because I am incredibly political and have very strong opinions about things, I blanket do not discuss politics on any of my platforms. Mm. Like I don't post anything anywhere flat out, but that doesn't mean I'm not doing stuff. And I think that that is okay as well. I think you mm -hmm. can be an activist well, and yeah, have a I mean, voice and do things that, and not post it on social media because what's social media going to do, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean, you raise like quite interesting points and like at the end of the day, people can campaign however they want to they can choose not to like that is obviously our rights as as humans 100%. to decide what it is we want to do i think and everything makes a difference as well right so 100%. i'm not trying to say that people who jump on like when something is big and then don't do anything that i'm not saying that that doesn't make a difference because maybe mm -hmm. maybe their particular post reached somebody who didn't know and yeah. then that person did something so everything counts well yeah I'm so just... this is 
this is what I find really interesting because as I say, like my background's very much marketing and we talk a lot about sort of like the attention cycles and, you know, we've spoken before about seasonality and all this kind of stuff. And like um, flat out disclaimer, I am massively supportive of a lot of these campaigns. Um, just, I know that sometimes, again, coming back to how, how can words um, change the world? Sometimes I don't quite get the right wordage. So I just want to dis- disclaimer, but um, so with things like the Black Lives Matter, I had that initial thing of, well, you're sharing a black square. What does that mean? Like, because the next day you're, you're not going to do anything else. That's going to be it. But then, you know, if you actually break it down and look at it, even if people who aren't typically active did, as it was, jump on the bandwagon, the amplifying of that message to the 10 followers from someone in Germany to the 100 followers, 1,000 followers from the different platforms, like it does amplify these messages in a way that they haven't been heard. And it really is this kind of... Um, I guess like almost like coastal waves of back and forth between all the different political issues. Cause again, like you, it's, it's, I can hear a plane going overhead every time. Um, but it really, like you can't address everything at once. And the, there are constant atrocities and it's horrible to like look at that side of the world and see that. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, trying to do the good way you can. That's, that's all that we can do and really try and sort of um, just share when we can, and support where we can and you know do it in our own way and we've all got our own journeys going because obviously the the lens that I see the world through will be very different to how you see the world be Mm. different to like how my friends see the world so obviously I've known in the background and again I'm not sort of um I don't want this to come across like I'm slagging off the sort of what about isms because like I, I I do get it um but like the Yemen issue for example like I've heard it in the background of my mind for ages but just because of where I am in my life and the things I'm looking at it's never reached my attention now it has much more because people are bringing this up and it is obviously a huge humanitarian crisis um but again like i i don't take any offense to that kind of stuff because i know deep down that i'm doing the best that i can in this moment and you know if it turns around to being able to point some attention that way 100 percent, i will do you know the texas stuff that's going on like i'm absolutely behind like how disgusting that is like there are there's so many different things and you can only do one at a time so um again you it's can. just like and you're you're putting a lot of good into the world as well and i think that you know, everyone needs to give you a round of applause for oh, all no, of the it's, effort. And the... It's the authors that are involved. So that's the that's the big one. Because if it wasn't for anyone involved in this, like it would be nothing. It would just be shouting to the void. So yes, but you are doing the organising and the corralling and the launching. So you can't discredit the uh, good okay. that you've put into the world. Oh, thank you. Um, but yeah, like words words can literally change the world. So again, the point of this campaign is fiction felt futile. How can I couple writing fiction with raising money for a really useful cause? And there are ways to do that. And, you know, we are demonstrating that right now. Um, there was another point I wanted to add on to that as well. Oh, yeah. In terms of writing fiction, as you say, just the power of helping someone feel seen. So I know that um, someone in the right, the Activate Yours community, Emmy Grange, I'll shout out her book, um, Needing Normal, is sort of very, very um, specific to, uh, I'm going to get the language wrong, um, but sort of. I can't, I can't think what the word is, but she's, she's reaching out to a very sort of specific niche audience who aren't represented in books because she's been reading books her whole life and she's never seen it. So she's really trying to like create an environment where um, sort of people who aren't paid attention to can be seen. And I think that is, that is highly underestimated just how powerful that is in fiction. Because obviously like speaking from the position of a straight white male, I am in nearly every book that there is. Um, and so I obviously don't see through that lens, but you know, a lot of people don't don't have that advantage and uh, yeah have that advantage and so um like just being mindful of how you represent people in fiction really sort of trying to diversify when you can and just supporting the global the global human race you know what i mean loving our fellow humans loving our fellow humans and just yeah mm-hmm. words man that's what we do that's our business mm-hmm and they just, are powerful and yeah. isn't it funny because like if it weren't for language development we wouldn't have evolved mm-hmm. like it is literally because of language that we are the human race that we are now yeah powerful crazy shit, man yeah man but yes we will leave it there our question to you guys this week how can writing change the world and from myself and sasha we will see you next week bye 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 Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Activated Authors podcast.
for more of me, listen to the Rebel Author Podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. Aww. My little poochie doggy. Oh. Wow. Aww, look at her. She's slowly getting settled. She, um, because obviously she's lived with that. Well, she's come up to five in December. Yeah. And she's used to my nanny and granddad. So everywhere I go at the minute, she goes like round Aww. my feet. She's a bit so nervous. She's got, got the bed literally next to the desk. <laughs> look at that fight. Oh, yeah. she <laughs> leaned into you. Yeah. It's so cool. If it wasn't for the headphones, like when I showed it to the activated authors guy, she literally like cuddles into here like a cradle. Oh my God, that's Thank adorable. You. Pretty sweet. Really placid. Oh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you. Oh, look, she knows her name. Oh, look how much she loves you already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very cute. She's a happy dog, aren't you? Oh. But I'm going to have to put you down because I've got a podcast to record. Oh, I just want to sleep on your chest. Mm-hmm. <laughs>